question. And here, um, wait a minute. Uh, hello everyone, I, I'm Wen Jae Lu from uh, Tsukuba University in Japan, and uh, today I will talk about uh, using homomorphic encryption for statistic, statistical analyst. And it's John Bok with my colleague Kawasaki and my supervisor Jun Sakuma. Okay. okay, here is the basic scenario of this talk. And we have a analyst on the right, and he wants to do statistical analysis on the cloud. And we also have uh, a bunch of uh, data provider who uploads his data to the cloud for the computation. And the analyst is very happy with this scenario because it, he can gather uh, distributed data and he, ha he can save his money and the cloud can do most of the work for him. Okay, however, the data provider might have, uh, have some concern about the cloud server, uh, especially when they are uploading uh, sensitive data such as medical records and genetic information. And our goal is to do statistical analysis on the cloud at the meantime to keep those data safe on the cloud side. Okay, uh, when we are talking about data security and how much you are going to protect, and also we, in our research, we also use this uh, secure multiple party computation notation, and we have many tools to build up uh, SMC protocol, such as Yao Scarborough circuit and fully homomorphic encryption. And however, when we are going to use these tools on the cloud, and we still need to face uh, problems such as development cost and low efficiency. A Yao Scarborough circuit enables us to do SMC for any function, which is great. But to use Scarborough circuit on the cloud, we might need to need multiple independent and collusion-free cloud servers. And also, a uh, high-speed network between those servers are needed to guarantee the performance of the protocols. And collusion-free servers and fast end-to-end -end networks mean lots of development costs and efforts. When we are using FHE on the cloud, things seem to become easier because we can just encrypt the data and send the ciphertext to the cloud. And the homomorphic property allows us to use just one single server, and therefore we do not, we, we do not need high-speed network on the server side. However, FHE protocol usually encrypts each bit of the input, and it can be very inefficient in terms of computation time and memory use. Okay, encrypting each bit enables us to evaluate any Boolean function on the encrypted data, but what we want to do is to do statistical analysis, and to do such computation, actually we can use two kinds of operation, and a matrix uh, operation and a comparison operation. And in our research, we first proposed two primitives for the matrix operation and for the uh, great, uh, uh, batch greater than operation from uh, homomorphic encryption, and on top of these two primitives, we show how to conduct a wide range of statistics, and in this talk, I will talk you through two of them, a continuous table and the li linear regression. And at first, we will give some brief introduction uh, about uh, full homomorphic encryption, and we use a public-private key scheme in our research, and we assume all the data provider and the cloud share the same public key, and the analyst holds the private key. And since we are using full homomorphic encryption, so we can do addition and multiplication on the input integers. And I would like to draw this analogy between the full homomorphic encryption and a back box, although it's not back, with a growth attached on it, so that we can actually operate things inside and without really touching them. Next, I will talk about a little bit about the packing technique used in our research. The packing technique allows us to somehow put a bunch of integers, instead of one integers, into one single ciphertext. And this blue box here indicates the ciphertext, and we have a vector inside it. And more importantly, single homomorphic operation on this ciphertext can give us uh, multiple results no uh, actual cost. This packing technique helps us to reduce the number of ciphertexts and gives us much uh, faster computation. And also we can homomorphically rotate a encrypted vectors and homomorphically replicate a specific location of a encrypted vectors. Okay, I'm going to talk about our proposed primitives and protocols. 
And in our research, we have three types of data for the numerical values. Uh, we transform it to a fixed point values. So we have to uh, determine the precision in advance. And for the categorical values, we use the one of K representation. For example, we can encode the female value as the vector at one zero and encode the male value as the vector zero one. And we have the third one is ordinal data, but we do not talk about it today. We just skip it. Okay, the first proposed primitive, uh, we use this primitive to do addition and multiplication on encrypt matrices. And we, we try to encrypt each row of the matrix separately. And so we are thinking about horizontally partitioned data. And this primitive is some kind of efficient and layout consistent, which we will come back it to in the next slide. And here is the example of how we are do the how, how we do the matrix multiplication on encrypted mat uh, encrypted uh, matrix, and we need three steps to get the result. First, we replicate the left hand side matrix, and then we multiply the re replicated uh, ciphertext with the right hand side matrix, which is encrypted row by row. And finally, we take one uh, summation and to get the result of the first row. And we do the same thing for the second row. And in total, to multiply an n square matrix, we need n square homomorphic operation. And this speed up is due to the packing technique. But an implicitly but Im still important property of this primitive is that the resulting matrix is also encrypted row by row. So we say our method is layout consistent. Why this layout consistency matters? Uh, because a uh, st statistical algorithm needs iterative matrix modifications. Assume we, we, uh, assume we have a efficient method for just single matrix modification, and if this method is not layout consistent, so we might need to adjust the layout of the uh, resulting matrix so that we can do iterative modification. So in the whole pictures, this method might be inefficient for iterative algorithm, and on the other hand, if the method is layout consistent at the beginning, so it can be efficient even for iterative algorithm. We are going to show some performance of our matrix primitive. Uh, we prepared with a, G a double circuit counterpart and, uh, sorry. Hmm? And we, we're going to show some result performance and we prepare, uh, compared our uh, method with the double circuit counterpart and we implement the double circuit using uh, object VM and we use two different kinds of network. And the left-hand side picture show how many seconds we need to do one matrix multiplication on two encrypted matrices. And the right-hand side picture show how many megabytes were transferred during the computation. And the horizontal axis indicate different size of a matrix. And we can see somehow the performance of, of our uh, primitives are very close to its garbage like counterpart. And here is just the performance of one single matrix multiplication. So when we are going to do iterative multiplication, uh, we think our, uh, our method is can perform better because we do not need communication during each iteration. And the second uh, primitive is to do comparison on encrypted vector uh, integers x and y. And it is easy to see uh, if and only if x are greater than y, so that we can find such k that uh, x minus y minus k equals to zero. This algorithm is work very well with the homomorphic encryption because we, what we need here is just doing homomorphic addition, uh, sub subtractions. And our idea is simply is to combine this algorithm with the packing. And what we do is, instead of encrypting one integer x, we try to encrypt d copies of x at once. And we pick d times and encrypt y, uh, d copies of y at once too. And Single homomorphic addition can give us multiple results. Uh, we write the result uh, at the, as the uh, eta. Uh, we need to de one decryption after uh, to, s to get the comparison result. And this combination is simple and it reduces the cross from uh, D to D over L. L is the maximum number we can put, in, put into one single ciphertext. And also we compare with our uh, greater than primitive with, with a garbage circuit implementation. 
and we come uh, we, we set uh, the parameter L to be about 70 hundreds so we can encrypt seven, uh, 70 hundreds uh, integers into one single ciphertext. And the left-hand side picture show the, the, com the, the time and the right-hand side picture show the communication cost. And the horizontal axis indicate different input bits. We, uh, we, uh, we, we compare uh, integer four bit integer to the 24 bit integers. And execution time and the communication cost uh, of our method grows exponentially with the uh, input bit, which is as our expectation. But for small domains such as uh, 15 and 16 bit domain, our primitive can run pretty fast comparing with the garbage like counterpart. And this small domain, we, I, we think it is enough for common ordinal statistic. So we are using our method. And the final part of this talk is to statistical protocols, uh, the protocol for the contingency, contingency table and the protocol for linear regression. And we will also introduce a print text precision expansion technique, which addresses some implementation concerns. Okay, we have three uh, records on the left, and we have two attributes. A conting contingency table is basically doing the counting, counting the numbers. So okay, the basic idea of our method is to do modification and then one uh, and then do the rotation on the encrypted vec uh, vectors. Like the the first uh, the first row of the computing gives us the counts of uh, the male smoker and the female non-smoker, and to get the remaining counts, we have to rotate the second vector to the right for one unit and take the modification again. And in our paper, actually we improve this basic algorithm to the log about the k times k times uh, k times k1 times k2 and furthermore to protect uh, the privacy of rare individuals we need to do some uh, cell suppression and cell suppression uh, we are considering uh, about to zero out some small value such as we zero out a uh, value that's less than 10 and we can use the following uh, formulation. Given the ciphertext x, we compute uh, y. If x is greater than the threshold, we set y equals to x. Otherwise, we set y as some random values. Actually, we, actually, we can implement this directly using our greater than primitive. And we call that if x is greater than the threshold, we have one zero in adder and we uh, take advantage of this zero. And we first generate two non-zero random vectors R and R dash and, do, and, and compute three ciphertexts. And from these three ciphertexts, we can recover X if and only if uh, zero is contained by either. And here's the experimental result of our continuous table protocol. And we measure the, the execution time in three parts time for counting, the time for doing the suppression, and the time for doing the decryption. And we can see that most of the work are done by the cloud. And the analyst only need to do uh, may, may about 10% of the work to do a decryption. Okay, the last protocol is uh, doing linear regression from encrypted numerical data. Basically, we need to, uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, Lin linear regression is uh, basically computing the, the above uh, formulation. Uh, the main effort of our linear regression protocol is to do the inversion of an encrypted matrix. And we use this division-free iterative algorithm to approximate, iteratively approximate the, the in uh, inversion of the matrix Q giving parameter lambda. And we can see that all we need to do here is just matrix addition and matrix multiplication. And, though, and thus, and we can ex easily implement this algorithm with our matrix primitive. And according to Gore, uh, we, we hope the parameter lambda to be the largest eigenvalue of Q, which can give us a, uh, a good approximation. And we use our PCA protocol to compute the largest eigenvalue. But one major issue of the division-free algorithm is that it might introduce very huge integers. However, the, cur the current FHE implementation only works for 16-bit integers, and it's far not enough. 
And we propose to use uh, a print text precision expansion technique, PPE. And PPE allows us to implement those kinds of division-free algorithm without changing the current library. And the main idea is, instead of using one set of pr parameters, PPE used k different param uh, parameters to achieve uh, k times speed uh, precision. And PPE to increase the computation cost by k times uh, is naturally parallelizable. And it's actually a direct application of the Chinese remainder theorem, and, but we, we, we do not get uh, much detail here. And here is the result of our linear regression protocol, and we need to run one PCA protocol to compute the eigenvalue, and which is shown in orange. And you might think it is not quite efficient because we might need three hours to compute uh, a model from 20 degrees, uh, 20 dimension, dimension. But it's much faster than the previous available uh, FHE solution. And we can use more cores to, sub to, to speed up the computation since PPE is naturally parallelizable. And okay, I'll uh, summarize my talk. And this talk, I have, uh, we have discussed about the secure statistical analysis in the cloud server with multiple data providers. And we propose two basic primitives built from FHE. And we also show how to uh, do, how to use those primitive to evaluate contingent table and linear regression and other protocols. And we want to state that we can use the encoding and the packing technique to improve to improve the FHG-based solution. That's all. Thank you very much.